Welcome back to a Deacon's Life. Deacon Tom Mashad here. Do you remember one of the past videos that had uh, someone named Anna and she gave her testimony about how she came into the Catholic Church and her journey into the church. And in passing, she mentioned her brother came into the church and we were like, wait, what? What just happened? Wait, say that again. So my daughter's down in Indiana with their family and she is took this video of Dietrich and interviewed him and talked and asked him about his journey into the Catholic faith and how he came into the church. So I hope you enjoy this video. Tell us about your journey to the Catholic faith. Yeah, well, I would, let's see, I would probably start when I was, when I was growing up, I had a lot of, I had a lot, I had a lot of Catholic friends. I had a lot of friends of all sorts of denominations and we all got along really well. And faith or what church I went to didn't really bother me until about probably my sophomore year of college, when that question started becoming more more of a serious question for me. I think I think particularly I was in a lot of conversations about what the role of the Holy Spirit is in the life of the church and in the life of small churches, small church communities. And I was in a lot of yeah, I had a lot of kind of heated discussions about that and I was really struggling to find a language for how to talk about how I had experienced church life growing up. I grew up Baptist, and then my family started going to an Anglican church, um, and that was where that was where I was during my college experience. So, I started looking around for people to read, and found a couple of thinkers who I really, really admired. One of whom was Raniero Cantalamesa, who is the papal preacher, and the way the way he talked about the Holy Spirit and the way the Holy Spirit works in someone's life to help grow a church community, help make a church community more vibrant. I found that really compelling. And it was kind of the first time I had encountered somebody who had a language for the Holy Spirit that wasn't wasn't kind of vague or ethereal. It's just, this is what the Holy Spirit does, and this is how it works in a church, and we should follow that. And I found that really admirable. And so that was kind of the first time I started thinking about the Catholic Church as having some serious things to say about my own walk with the Lord. Fast forward a number of years, um, senior year of college, my sister entered the church and I started dating. And my my girlfriend at the time, she was she was Catholic, and we started talking seriously about that. And then we got engaged and started talking more seriously about that, and I decided to enter an RCIA program. One of the big things we talked about in our relationship that was really helpful for me was how to navigate actually entering the church because the college we went to is a small college. Faith is very serious to a lot of the people there. It was an ecumenical college. And there were a lot of ways in which making any sort of move with your own faith life often seemed, it often had the potential to be a little a little tribal. So there, a lot of times at school, some somebody who, is, who everybody knew would start going to a different church and there was always kind of contention about that and me and my me and my fiance we talked a lot about that and decided to wait until after college for me to enter an RCIA program so I could get a little bit more of a of a broader experience of what the Catholic world is like there and so yeah after after college um, we got engaged I entered RCIA and RCIA was wonderful and then I entered the church at Easter and then we got married eight days later awesome so can you tell us a little bit about how your RCA program was? Yeah, so we started in August. Started in late August, early September. We met every Tuesday. And it was a, it's a big church, the, the parish where I entered, entered the church. It's a big, I think it's something about 10,000 families. So a very large parish, a pretty established RCA program run by a professor um, professor of theology, got his PhD in theology. Kind of a kind of an interesting time because it was all this was during COVID, so the program was a little limited in how much it could expose us, how much they could expose to us of the church. Um, masses were hard to get to. We always had to stay socially distanced. Um, we had a couple instances of people testing positive, and so having to take breaks and stuff like that. But over overall, the the format was very, very encouraging. So we started with about six, seven weeks just on the Bible, just on Jesus, what 
what the story of the Bible is, and then we transitioned into talking about how do we particularize that to the Catholic Church, and then around the start of Lent, we started thinking really seriously about, all right, these are the claims we've talked about, now let's actually prepare ourselves for entering into the Church. So what sacraments did you receive when you came to the Church? I received the sacrament of confession, Holy Communion, Confirmation. I'm going to count marriage because that happened the next week. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's it. Wow. You got a lot at once right there. Yeah. Yeah, it was, pretty, it was a pretty big week. Were any of them you were super excited about? Yeah. Actually, surprisingly enough, confession was... I mean, marriage, obviously. But <laughs> confession, was a, confession was a very moving experience. It was, it was one of the things that I had always kind of been a little hung up on because there's there's kind of a broader notion, sort of, sort of like a, a, a Catholic guilt thing, where confession is this thing that happens, like I sin, oh no, I have to go to confession, and becoming almost, yeah, om- yeah almost a weird way to escape escape something. I didn't, I didn't really know what, but there are all, all these things that are sort of not sitting well with me while we were talking about it in RCA, but the actual experience of confession a lot of those things became clear, clear of, oh, this, this is what, this is actually, in some very deep, profound way, redemptive and clarifying to the soul, and, and actually understanding this is, the Lord is at work here in some way, that just, just from the way it was described, it didn't seem that that was going to be the case, but it actually, I've actually found, and after entering the church, each time I've gone to confession, I've found that to be true, that the Lord really works and I think actually it does help make you a better person. Like there is something to be said for just talking with a priest and realizing, oh, these are the ways in which I, I have failed. And you start to notice things about yourself that you can say, oh, now that I've noticed that about myself, I can make that better. So oh. yeah, that was one I was really excited for. That That's beautiful. paid off well. Was there any teaching that made you rethink your decision? No, but I have two kind of funny stories about that. Alrighty, let's hear them. The most Catholic social teaching was a really interesting part of was really interesting part of RCAA. Not not because the teaching, I mean, hearing the teaching explained made made perfect sense. Like the the way the Catholic Church operates socially in the world, a lot of the papal encyclicals we talked about there. Um, I think it's Laudato Si. I think it's Laudato Si. I think that's the one. We we talked a lot about that, but I think the particular. Oh, one, one of the things I wrestled with most in RCA was, all right, I get that this is what the Catholic Church teaches, but when I look in particular at the church in front of me, what do I do with the fact that sometimes these things don't seem to play out as perfectly as they seem in the teaching? And Catholic so- social teaching was one of the ones that I found hardest to think about because, A, it's just a really complicated subject. How, how as a parish, do you work on actually serving your community and serving the people around you in a way that is both enriching to the life of the church and serves the community well. I think a lot of times, from what I've seen from all, all the churches I've experienced in my life, it's sometimes easier to fit, fall really hard on one side or the other. Or Our church has a lot of programs that we do, but it's just something that we do. It's not something that helps us grow closer together. Or we have all these things that we do together, but it doesn't actually help us care for the poor. So I found that a very... Yeah, kind of a challenging part of our CIA, okay. trying to learn how to wrestle with that and think about how the community aspect of church and the social, like how we can help our communities, how to, how to fit those together. That was, that was an interesting part. The other funny story would be actually on Easter night um, during the actual confirmation when all the, con- all the confer- confirmation people, the con- confirmees, um, Confirmandi? Confirmandi? Can- candidates. candidates, candidates, yes. <laughs> the candidates, um, when the, the priest stood up in front of us and said, do you profess to be true all that the Catholic Church holds and teaches? And the first thing that went through my head was, hmm, we definitely did not talk about everything that the Catholic Church holds and teaches in our CIA. Wow, this is interesting. How do I answer this question? Because, and it, yeah, and it's, it wasn't a huge soul-shaking thing I just realized I have not been told everything and frankly it'd be kind of hard to tell me everything but that's just not the case 
And so I had to make a decision there that no, even though I haven't been told everything and I haven't been taught everything, and frankly, some, yeah, some of the things have been taught better than others. That's just how our CIA goes. I had to make the decision to trust the church and the people I knew and the people I knew growing up. Yeah, and so I just made that decision. So did Anna's coming to the church have anything to do with your decision? Yeah, yeah, it did. It was, I think, hearing Anna's, Anna's stories about RCIA, about her, her path there, as well as, well as my, my now wife Kasha's, Kasha's stories, I think the two of them together really helped, especially, on some, especially some of the harder parts where it was, like, I found RCIA kind of boring or something like that. They, they were very helpful for talking about those things, knowing Anna's experience at the same church. That was really helpful and a good partner in that decision. Nice. Okay, last question. If someone came up to you and told you that they were thinking about becoming Catholic, what would you recommend they did? That's a really good question. I would probably say two things. I would say one, they should actually go find somebody in their life they trust and talk to about that. That, that was really helpful for me. Find two people. One, they should go to a church and talk to a priest about it. Because I found that really helpful. And two, they should also talk to somebody else in their life who they trust, who they think would be helpful in a decision like that, and actually talk through what's going on in their life spiritually. I think that would be really helpful. I think a second thing, and this was told to me during during this whole process, during sort of my journey through college and my spiritual journey to the Catholic Church, one, uh, a wise man I trust from, from way back home in Minnesota, he told me to spend three weeks every morning just praying and Specifically, what he told me to pray was he said, told me to sit down and talk to the Lord and say, Lord, it's your world. I want to work for you in your world, and that is what I want to do. And ju just that, just telling the Lord that I want to serve you in your world, and it is your world, and I feel responsible for that. And that was really, I, I think that was really helpful for me, just to get my relationship with the Lord on the right foot before making a big decision. So that's what I would say. I hope you enjoyed that video of Dietrich and how in his testimony, his journey into the Catholic Church. How awesome it is it to hear someone's faith journey, how they came into the church. As cradle Catholics, if you were born into the Catholic Church, we take for granted, I think at times, our faith. But to hear someone's journey, how they came into the church, and maybe some of the things that caused them to pause for a little bit of why, you know, maybe I don't want to come into the church or questioning things, which we all need to continue to ask questions of our faith and to learn more and more. But it gives you, I think it gives, gives you hope to hear somebody else's, somebody else's story and how they came into the church. And Dietrich's, just like Anna's, is awesome to hear it. It's just so cool to hear what moved them into the church. Was it someone, which it usually is, but just that, that journey to have that a deeper relationship with Jesus Christ. And that's what we're all going for. And the ultimate goal, as we all know, is heaven. So until next time, God bless you. Keep praying and keep serving.